Good morning. morning. How are you today? Welcome to church this morning. It's wonderful to see you all. Also, greetings to those who are joining us on YouTube or Facebook. Today is the first Sunday of FM, the beginning of the Christian year. I believe some of us are very familiar with Advent, but just in case some of us here or watching online are new to this, let me explain very briefly. The word Advent is derived from the Latin word Adventus, Adventus, meaning coming, visit, or arrival. The season begins four Sundays prior to Christmas and increase all days until Christmas Eve. According to uh, Reverend Dr. Mark Roberts from Fuller Theological Seminary, Advent signifies um, some special things that we do this season. Let's see. Yes, it is a season of preparation, waiting, expectation, hope, yearning, and our need of a saviour. During the season of Advent, Christians remember the Jewish yearning uh, for their desire, uh, sorry, the coming of the Messiah. We also get in touch with our own hope for the Messiah's second Advent, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the early church context, there was little connection between Advent and Christmas. In modern day churches, we observe Advent by lighting the candles of the Advent wreath on the four Sundays before Christmas. I've got you little something here. For those who have a good view, because I'm blocking it possibly, the Advent wreath, I've got you this. So it's four purple and pink candles with the Christ candle in the middle. And to our friends here too. So each candle have a meaning. The first candle is hope, and the other three signifies peace, joy, and love. On Christmas Day, we will light the Christ candle in the middle. Today, we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. Let us steal our hearts and minds before God as Craig lights the candle of hope for us. While Craig is doing that, I'm going to sing you some special words to the tune of Away in a Manger. Possibly you might join me singing next week for the different candle. Thank you. Away.
Yes, Lord, Emmanuel, God with us. We now come to God with our prayer of confession. Let's pray. Loving God, we know as we follow the life of Jesus in the scriptures, how much he longed for his followers and his hearers to experience the relationship of deep trust and intimacy that he held with you. And we read how often he was disappointed in them and for them. We know that we stand in their place today. We read, preach, sing and pray all the right words. We know the language of your love and your call to us. But so often, all it is, is language. So often we do not let your truth of unconditional love and peace live deep in our lives. Sometimes we are sleepwalkers in the vibrant and awake world. Today, we confess our stupidity, our stubbornness, and our faithlessness. Please join me as we ask God together. Forgive us, we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear these words of assurance. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is among us. Around us, among us, within us, is the world of God alive. We are forgiven and we are loved. Thanks be to God. Let us continue to worship God by singing together hymn number 200. Come thou long expected Jesus. Let me turn to the right page. Number 200. Come thou long expected Jesus. Just find me here. Cool. And hmm. Christmas 
Day Third is on the 25th, Christmas Day, at 7 a.m. So we will have our usual Sunday service on Boxing Day at 9 a.m. as usual. And please join us in decorating our Christmas tree. We would love community involvement. Make it your own. So don't let Sven dictate what colour. Just kidding. <laughs> So we love your, we love everybody's contribution. We have this wonderful decoration here. So stay for a cup of tea after the service, and we can do it together. Or if you like something new addition, bring something from home next week. We make our own special community ch uh, church Christmas tree. And I have also brought a couple of red bags. I'm not sure. I think you might be familiar with it. Previous year. This is the Wesley Mission. I used to work for them in the aged care home, so I know them really well. The web back up here. So we collect um, food parcel items, durable goods, chocolates, anything can bring a cheer for a family or a single mom or single dad at home, just to help them celebrate Christmas. And this collected items, the bags, will I can maybe, how about in the next Sunday or two, I just leave the bags here. If you can fill a whole bag, please do. Take one home. That's a little piece of information. Give you ideas what you can put in. If you said, no, I don't want to buy the whole bag, too much. You can bring a few items in. We contribute, we fill two bags and I will drop them to the emergency relief hub in 42 Valley. So when we have this ready, okay? Anyone, voluntary involvement. Don't feel stressed too, but it's Christmas. It's the season we celebrate the gift of giving. Any other announcement? There's a lot of things happening, I might forget. So let me know. I'll share some reasonable idea for this, but this one is the best. Give thanks to God. Praise God. <laughs> Be our guide, bless and protect 
our children and young people. May they grow and flourish in the beauty of the world that you have made. In Jesus' name, Amen. We now turn to the scriptures. Sven is going to read the Old Testament reading and the second reading for us today, and Craig will follow Sven to read uh, us the Gospel reading. Morning all. Uh, I've got two readings. The first one is from Jeremiah 33, 14 to 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Saviour. And the second reading is from the first letter to the Thessalonians 3, 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to, be, to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good everyone. Um, our Gospel reading this morning is from Luke, uh, chapter 21, verses 25 through to 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from fear and terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At the time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they spread leaves you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be God. So before we reflect on today's message, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your living word. You speak to us through your word. We thank you. As we explore your word this morning, may what I'm about to share be more of you and less of me. Help us to understand and be willing to put into action some of the things you will remind us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, we looked at what kind of a king Christ Jesus is. 
Jesus gave, gave up his crown for a cross. He pointed to his kingdom and he also pointed to us. We the people, his faithful followers and royal priests who serve God are his real claim to royalty. If Christ is truly to be king, then his search, uh, his reach and kingdom will be found and known in the midst of us. This week, the beginning of the season of Advent, Advent in the church life uh, circle, uh, this come to mean a season of longing, waiting, and preparation. We are longing for, waiting for, and preparing for the coming of the kingdom of God in our midst. Certainly, at this time in human history, we are longing for renewal, restoration, and recreation as individuals and as a society. Throughout the Gospel of Luke, human fear is mentioned quite often. It uses the words fear and afraid almost twice as often as in the Gospel of Matthew and three times as often as Mark and John. To live fearlessly in Luke is not a matter of courage as much as it is of trust. Five times people who are called by God are urged to not to be afraid. Three times in the beginning of the first two chapters. Go back and read the Gospel of Luke if you like to find those verses. Instead, they are encouraged to trust. The audience of the Gospel of Luke are called to trust, trust God through the message of an angel and to trust Jesus. That's in chapter 5, 12, and 12 again. Each time we hear, do not be afraid, the words do not stand alone. Each time, they are followed by a specific claim to which the rest recipient can attach their trust. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says to us that when the signs of end time begins, people will faint from fear and terror apprehensive of what is coming on, onto the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And at the time they will see Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. He then encouraged the Israelites in verse 28 that when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Stand up and lift up your heads. They are postures of hope. That means do not be afraid. Do not curl up into your fetal position, which is in fear. But stand up and lift up your head, for your redemption is drawing near. So let's unpack a little bit more on the promise and hope that our Lord Jesus gives us. One thing is certain about our experience as human beings. Life includes times of sorrow and personal challenge. Throughout history, people are needed, uh, needed reminders of God's faithfulness as they waited for answers and for deliverance. The psalm in the Bible are a sobering reflection of our human relationship with God. They remind us that God expects and deserves our honesty. In our reading from Jeremiah this morning, we have a glimpse of hope. A hope that is, um, I think I have point number one there, a hope that is about a promise. In the Jeremiah reading that's when read for us, we hear words of promise of a faithful God, even as God acknowledges Israel's unfaithfulness. Israel has failed to love God with all his heart, mind, strength, and soul. The Israelites have followed false gods and forgotten their identity as children of the God of Abraham and Sarah. Their condition is so sad that rumor on the street is saying that God has abandoned Judah. 
in Jerusalem. The Jews are ruled by an unrighteous king, Zedekiah, and they have suffered at the hands of foreign invaders. And yet, they persist in their daily disobedience to God's holy standards. Yet the word of the Lord assures them that God does not abandon them or fail to keep God's promises. The Lord declares to his people that the days are coming when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. A righteous branch will sprout from David's line. The Lord, our righteous Savior, will do what is just and right in the land. Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live again. What a promise. That's a promise of hope. God heals and replenishes, forgives and restores, and amazes the Israelites with gracious abundance. In the place where unrighteous has reigned, God will bring righteous authority. In a community governed by injustice, God will bring justice. This is our God. But these are promises yet to be fulfilled. God's people will have to deal with this reality of the present bondage, suffering and disobedience. They have to find courage and faith to hope in God's word, to live in God's forgiveness and to mold themselves into a community that will not waste what God has given them. Jeremiah's prophetic words are a message of hope. But like all prophetic messages, they are also a renewal of call, a renewed call to all of us, to accountability and repentance. And we will encounter another such prophetic message in our Gospel reading for today, in Luke chapter 21. But just let's go back a little bit. We will sit, I believe, in the last 12 months. I believe the community here have journeyed with Jesus and the disciples through the Gospel of Mark. Today, for the next 12 months, our Gospel readings will come from the book of Luke. The Gospel reading for this week in particular, for this first Sunday of the Christian year, can possibly appear a bit pe peculiar to some. In, an, in this reading, it seems to be talking about end times in the beginning of the year, rather than the advent of the first coming of Christ. These readings talk about when Christ will come again. The words we read and hear uses a language that we call apocalyptic. Don't scare that word, because that means explain a little bit. In that it refers to a time yet to come. Remind us that we, all of us, live in that time between the already and the not yet. The theological word for this eschatology. Like the reading from Revelation last week, it means bringing the past forward and the future back into now, so that in our present, we can both remember the past and begin to live in the future God has planned for us. It is what we celebrate in the sacraments of communion, which we will share next week, and it is what Jesus calls us when he says, the kingdom of God is near. Though the Gospel reading today first appears to be a bit doom and gloom, with people overwhelmed with fear and terror, it also points us to God's faithfulness, like the reading in Jeremiah does as well. This is a passage of hope. Some people may say that our faith and Christian hope are some kind of support system that keeps us from accepting the harsh realities of life. But we know that Jesus doesn't call us to shy away from, his, uh, from our life's hurdles and challenges. He calls us to witness to another reality that exists alongside the reality of this world, the reality of God's goodness and faithfulness. Jesus is calling people to open their eyes and see the world for what it is. We cannot hope for a better future 
unless we acknowledge the reality of the present. And once we see the present for what it is, we can act in ways that point toward a better future. What we do today does affect tomorrow. God does call us to play a part in world history, you and I. When we see signs of despair and suffering in the world, our knowledge of God's faithfulness and how we express our faith together help us offer signs of hope, patience and perseverance to an aching world. Yes, it is too big a job for anyone to do alone. I learned quite early in my ministry that bringing signs of hope to an aching world is something I can't do on my own. I need a community and I need regular reminders about where true hope can be found. We do need God every day. And that's what Advent is all about. The Advent of Christ is something that is ongoing in the life of the Christian community, not isolated to some moment 2,000 years ago or some far distant future we cannot see. Our present living is not merely about waiting for God's promises to be fulfilled. And we are certainly not called to be fearful or worrying about the signs of end times. Everything about life, our relationships, our struggles, our dreams and fears can all reveal God in our midst. That's when hope happens and hope changes people. It changes us in the present, my, I think second point, and that we together may help to change the world. Jesus, follows, uh, Jesus followers today are called to live honorably while waiting for the fulfillment of God's promise. We are also called to participate actively in bringing God's kingdom into our world. To conclude, I would like to borrow Apostle Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Brothers and sisters, May God find us ready when Christ comes again. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you call us to open our eyes so that we may see. This Advent season, as we prepare to yet again celebrate God revealed in the most unlikely of ways, may we, may we have the courage to reveal God in our midst. And in doing so, May we have a renewed sense of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us respond by singing a hymn which reminds us of the hope we have is founded in God. Number 465. 465. And we are going to sing to tune number 2. So on your book should be page 555. All my hope in God is found. Oh, uh, page five five four. <laughs> for hymn number four six five.
said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The work we do, the money that we give, becomes part of the eternal work of God. Let us give generously as we take up our offerings now. Those who wish to give your tithe online, especially our friends watching online, please see our bank account details on the screen. Take a photo or take a piece of paper for those who are here with the information on the offering plate. God of infinite grace and love, we bring ourselves and our resources. Seek not to be afraid, but to live as people of your good, abundant, and gracious kingdom. May we bring all these gifts to be used for joy and love. In the name of Christ. Amen. We now come to God with our prayers of the people. Anyone would like to bring a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of thanks? lifting to God now. Yes, we pray for peace for this season, not a season of a little S word. Put away. <laughs> and anything else? Like travel easy. Yes. A lot of traveling coming up soon. Safe travels and easy travels. And yes, I think the news we, we started praying for praise God for rings and also protection for floods. I think a few areas is getting a bit uh, inundated, a little bit with covering coming, so I might include some of this in our general prayer later. Anything else? Ah, yes? So, so pray that um, the sickness doesn't increase when the, when the travel does begin. True. Mm, pray for protection, especially the news about the new variant. A bit of a worry. So when uh, Sue said when travel, we do yeah, easily catch something. We pray for protection from sickness and we pray for protection from all uh, states, country and all over the world. Because you know one place in the world can bring to some other place. So we can't just pray for our own country. Let's all pray for the world, for this pandemic to end. In particular, I would like to lift up scientists. They are very important. Finding out the genomes. Uh, we keep praying for protection, virus to be effective, and I think it's also good to pray for a cure eventually. That would be great. Please God. And also, a couple items I put down I would like to bring. I always like others first. Say, I'm sure you've heard on the news this week about the unrest in the Solomon Islands and Australian troops are deployed to help with maintaining peace. So we would like to pray into that. And today is a national day of prayer of Myanmar. We heard early in the year that there was bloodshed, a lot of death, unrest, civil unrest, and political unrest. So the Burmese diaspora here in Australia comprising, um, I think those who worship in churches and followers of Muslim, Hindu and other faiths will be coming together on this National Day of Prayer to show support for the people of Myanmar and to pray for their suffering to end. So this is an event actually on event, right? If anyone or your neighbours might be interested, just point them Google National Day of Prayer. It's 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock this afternoon online. So because I think a lot of news have disappeared in our mainstream media, but we, Craig and I had the privilege to visit it um, a few years ago and some friends on Facebook still say yeah, they still die at the situation there and still need our prayer support. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for hearing our prayer points and thanksgivings. 
we leave them all to you. Those spoken just now and those in our hearts, trusting that you will answer them. Jesus told his followers to be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. What might have been difficult for Jesus' followers in the poor villages and towns of ancient Palestine is for us in the modern West almost unavoidable. We live in a culture specially designed to encourage and promote dissipation, the continual pursuit of pleasure, of experience and of the good life. We are inundated with opportunities for drunkenness and other ways of taking ourselves out of the truth of the world. And into this unarmed, unreality and wishful thinking. We pray for those of us in the grip of addictions of substances, to fantasy worlds, to consumption, to glamour, and to diminishing pleasures. We pray for those of us weary and weighed down with the constant need for stimulation and activity or for novelty. We pray today, God, you are the God of truth, for the courage and clarity of our culture needs to live in truth and not in a dream world. God of justice and peace, we pray for the civil unrest and the political turmoil in the Solomon Islands and Myanmar. We pray for those who are in the position to bring changes. Pray for those in those positions to bring peace and unity to their nation. We also pray for protection and strength for those who help with maintaining peace on the streets and giving medical support for the injured, including the Australian Defence Force personnel deployed to the Solomon Islands. May you provide for those who need to rebuild their home and businesses, not just in those two countries, but also for the areas who suffered um, recent flash flooding. And may you bring a sense of hope for those who need it in their dark hours, a hope for the future that is signified with the righteousness of our Lord. May your will be done and your kingdom come to these places. In Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen. Let us join together and pray confidently according to the words Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. Now let us sing our final hymn that reminds us the element of expectation of this Advent brings. Number 207. There's a light upon the mountains.
live in trust in your presence. So we go. Let us go in peace in the name of Christ. Let us go in courage in the power of the Spirit. Let us go in hope in the love of God. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Thank you.